Hello everyone, the new year 2025 and we've already got lots of exciting things in the first two weeks of this year, including NVIDIA's CES announcement of a very cool model called NVIDIA Cosmo. Now, I've shown this in my previous keynote highlight for the CES Tour video. The NVIDIA Cosmo series of diffusion models developed by NVIDIA is a beautiful take on video diffusion models. They're using text-to-world or video-to-world to represent text-to-video, image-to-video, and video-to-video -video model weights. As I've mentioned previously, AI video models come in two types or two different kinds of model weights. You can't expect to use text-to-video model weights and input an image as the first frame to generate an image-to-video output from the AI models. So they've released a complete set of model weights here. You can check out the list as well as other components like the unsampler, tokenizer, and auto-aggressive model weights. There are two sizes of this diffusion model, 7 billion parameters and 14 billion parameters. As I checked the Comfy UI page, someone raised this as an issue, but it's actually not an issue. It's an update for Comfy UI. If you scroll down to the reply here, it shows that testing is already being done for the latest Comfy UI update. When you click into this link, it's the WAP commit where most of the new coding is shown, adding to the history of different versions on the GitHub project page. Based on what I've seen here, there are updates for the Comfy UI latent format patch and VAE with some hints showing that NVIDIA Cosmo is already able to run in Comfy UI. There's also some demo testing on the Comfy UI GitHub page, and the safe tensor conversion files are already posted on Hugging Face. Now, Comfy.org hasn't officially posted a blog yet to announce that this is officially supported in Comfy UI, but it's in the works. When I clicked into the latest update of the Comfy UI Git, I saw the readme file, which shows a notice for testing workflows for NVIDIA Cosmo models. You can download these two workflows for text-to-video and image-to-video. Basic stuff to run the NVIDIA Cosmo video diffusion models. There are four links here to download the diffusion models, including the 7B and 14B versions, as well as the text-to-video and video-to-world model weights. You'll need to download both if you want to run both workflows here. The diffusion models, of course, will be saved in the Comfy UI models and diffusion underscore model subfolders. For example, if you click into here, this is the text to world model weights, but of course you're not downloading the NVIDIA model weights directly because there are full model files in PT format. You can run these in Comfy UI, but the safe tensor files are repackaged specifically for Comfy UI. You can click this link and there you go. You'll get all four model weights compressed or repackaged into safe tensor files. As you can see from the file names here, you can download these files to run the models. The 7B version is more consumer PC friendly, while the 14B requires much larger VRAM. For the clip loader, text encoder, and VAE model files, you'll need to download these two files and save them. Of course, it's the same procedure as usual. Download them into the models and text underscore encoder subfolders. The OT5 XXL safe tensor models, that is the text encoder, and the VAE files are the Cosmo CV8X8 safe tensor files. This is the dedicated VAE model created by NVIDIA for Cosmo. So click into this link here and it'll redirect you to the Comfy UI Hugging Face repository where they've saved two folders. Just follow the instructions, for example, the text underscore encoder folder. Then, of course, you'll save the files in the Comfy UI models folder and the text underscore encoder subfolder. Now, this OT5 XXL is not the same as the T5 XXL we use in Flux LTX or other existing Comfy UI Diffusion Transformer architecture models. The one we currently use for Flux is the T5 XXL version 1.1, while this OT5 XXL is version 1.0. So, these are two different T5 XXL models. NVIDIA Cosmo is based on version 1.0, while Flux and others, as mentioned in the Comfy UI Redmi, use T5 XXL version 1.1. So don't mix these up. If you want to use NVIDIA Cosmo, you'll need to download this OT5 XXL safe tensor. There are FP8 and FP16 versions available, as shown in this link, but for inference on consumer PCs, the FP8 version is good enough. Once you've downloaded all three model files, the text encoder, VAE, and the safe tensor files for the AI models, you can load these two workflow files. You can click this link to download them, or as you can see, the JSON files are right here.
Just click the raw button on the top left to save the JSON text files to your local machine and you're ready to go. I haven't seen much information yet about NVIDIA Cosmo running in ComfyUI. The file updates in the ComfyUI GitHub repository are the only hints I found. When I saw the update to the model-based Python code, there was an import for the Cosmo models, and I noticed some settings here that are specific to NVIDIA Cosmo. There's some coding related to block, latent, and model weights here that most people won't dive into, but I'm interested in AI stuff, so I dug deeper to check it out. They've also included the VAE to detect the new NVIDIA Cosmo VAE models, as well as some diffusion sampling steps they've created specifically for NVIDIA Cosmo. So the other hints I've seen are the update notices from ComfyUI, which mention the test workflows for NVIDIA Cosmo. That's what I've been looking at. Based on that, I've built testing workflows for text-to-video and image-to-video. I've also tried something else. Remember, the image to video and video to world model weights for NVIDIA Cosmo actually allow video inputs. I'm not sure if they've explicitly mentioned this, but yes, they've included it in the specifications. As you can see, the input formats include text, image, and even MP4 format videos. So what this means, in theory or in practice, is that the NVIDIA Cosmo video to world model weights are capable of video to video by default. Basically, maybe later in Comfy UI, we'll see some native nodes enabled to create video-to-video -video workflows using this model. I guess there's no need for additional custom node installations to load a video input into this AI model. Once you've loaded the demo workflows from the Comfy UI page, like the text-to-video and image-to-video demo workflows, it's just drag and drop into Comfy UI. But again, make sure you've updated your Comfy UI. I've noticed a lot of people don't update Comfy UI when I mention it, and then they try to run new AI models. I just ignore those comments on YouTube. So back to the workflow, we've got the load diffusion model and the clip loader. This time, it's easier because we're not using a dual clip loader like in Flux. We're only using the T5XXL old version, which is version 1.0. Right now, they've named this file OT5XXL. Whatever the name is, as long as it works, it's fine. Here, I've got the Cosmo 7B Text to World Safe Tensor, which is for text to video generation. By default, in this text to video model workflow, Comfy has added some hints here. For example, when you see the torch compile model and the model sampling continues EDM, it's using the EDM sampling for the model. It's okay if you enable this node, it'll use Sigma as the range of settings here. That's basically how it works. For the torch compile model, you'll need Triton installed and enabled to run this. It'll render or sample faster. There's also the queue to graphs option, but that one loads slowly. I'd recommend using the inductor option instead. These run in the background to handle video model rendering. But of course, for Torch Compile, you'll need to install Torch 2. 5.1, I remember that's required to enable compatibility with the inductor option. Moving to the workflow below, it's a very simple, usual procedure using a K sampler. We pass the conditions from the beginning here, from the text encoder, and we've got both the clip text and NVIDIA Cosmo conditions. One thing I like about this model is that it allows you to use negative prompts. You know, in Flux, you can't input negative prompts. Even if you put text in the negative conditions, it just ignores it. But for this model, it works pretty cool. There's also a bypass LTX conditioning node. This actually has nothing to do with LTX. The main purpose of this node is to control the frame rate of the generated videos. It passes the conditioning to let the AI know we want 24 FPS, but you don't actually need this node. I think that's why Comfy bypassed this node in the testing workflow notice. So yeah, you don't need to use it because I've tried it. It works without the 24 FPS setting here. After that, you'll see the K sampler and there's a new type of sampler method called Res Multistep. This Rest Multistep sampling method, I guess, is specifically for NVIDIA Cosmo. It uses a multi-step sampling process for rendering. I've also tried other sampling methods like Euler, which also works, but the rendering output isn't as good as using the Rest Multistep method. I noticed that the scheduler in this workflow is set to Keras by default. You can also use normal or simple for the scheduler method. It's up to you. But using Keras allows for more creativity in the AI's output, especially for AI videos. So yeah, just try it out. If you want to use other scheduler methods, feel free to experiment. There's no textbook answer for sampling here. It all depends on what you want for your output videos. Here, 
I've changed the output to Video Combine and saved it as an MP4. This is a very simple basic text-to-video workflow similar to what we used to do in Stable Diffusion. It's straightforward and easy to read and understand. I think native node integration for AI videos is a good thing. Hopefully in the future, more AI video models will have native integrations like LTX, Hunyuan videos, and now NVIDIA Cosmo. It's a good sign for the ecosystem. Now, let's check out the image to video workflow. It's almost the same as the text to video workflow. You'll see all the same nodes appearing here, but the only difference is that we're using the Cosmo image to video latent node. This takes an image as input. And so we've got a load image node here as the input, and then we use the VAE to read the latent data. We pass that latent image data to the K sampler as the first frame, and it'll sample the AI's interpretation to create the video. That's how it works. By default, this comes with the latest update of Comf UI. You can just go to the search bar and type Cosmo and it'll show up. So for image to video, you'll use the Cosmo image to video latent node. And for text to video, you'll use the empty Cosmo latent video node. Both nodes have the same settings parameters, width, height, length, and batch size. By default, this AI video model generates videos at 1208x704 resolution, which is pretty cool. For example, if I'm not using image to video and instead using text to video, you'll see the VAE decode node here. This uses the default VAE decode, whereas in LTX and Hunyuan videos, we use VAE decode tile to downsize the tile size, which allows us to run longer video lengths. Usually, for people with low VRAM, in Hunyuan videos, you'd set the length to 1 or 2 seconds, but in NVIDIA Cosmo, the default length is 121 frames, which at 24 FPS equals about 5 seconds of video. Here, we see that by default, it's using only the VAE decode. I've noticed some hints in the settings where the default tile size is 240. I guess this is how they've set the VAE decode for tiling. Well, it's not just the VAE decode. In general, NVIDIA Cosmo uses a tile size of 240. That doesn't show up in the VAE decode tiled settings, though. As you can see, I can't set 240 here. So they're not using this node. They're using the default VAE decode. Maybe the source code automatically detects if it's NVIDIA Cosmo and applies these settings. I'm not sure, but yeah, it's able to use the VAE decode like this and generate videos. So let's try an image to video example here. I've got this image of a robot sitting on a rocket. We need to use the resize image node to match the dimensions for Cosmo. I've tested this and using these dimensions tends to perform better in terms of resolution and video pixel quality. We'll set these numbers and pass them to the Cosmo VAE encode, or what we're now calling the image to video latent node. We'll also crop the center of the image in case the aspect ratio doesn't match these dimensions. Then we come back here and everything looks good. We can start the process. Again, I haven't changed any settings here. It's all by default based on the update notice from Comfy UI. The only thing I changed was the output to Video Combine and saved it as an MP4 because it looks better than saving as WebP. Let's wait for the generated result and see. But before that, while it's generating, as you can see, even if I bypass all these nodes, so that means the load diffusion model is directly connected to the K sampler in this case, and it's still able to run this AI model. I guess the Torch Compile model and the Model Sampling EDM are advanced options for people who want better workflow performance. Let's wait for this generation first and we'll see the output later. Here's the result. Again, the prompt was able to follow what I wanted for the robot's action, but this one seems to have lightning storms in the background with the lightning going behind the rocket and some unfinished noise around there at the end of the video. But again, this can be fine-tuned based on the sampler settings. I've got some other samples generated and we'll see how those turn out. I've also enhanced this simple workflow to be more modular and capable of upscaling. Using vision language models to prompt the image as the video prompt helps the text encoding perform better. But so far, it's able to handle everything with this simple workflow. Of course, you can switch the empty latent to text to video like this one. For the installation of NVIDIA Cosmo, I'll go step by step in another video on the new tutorial that'll cover everything in detail. As for the update to Comfy UI, you can see in the Cosmo image to video latent node that it now supports start image and end image. 
This was just released yesterday, and I updated ComfyUI to use it. So now, it's enabled to use two images here. One as the start frame and one as the end frame. We're able to animate things like this. This one looks pretty nice this time, though the ending part still has a little morphing. Still, it looks better than many open source image to video AI models. So that's it for this video. Give it a try, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya!